And when the book opens, she is... So when this book opens, and our main character, so that's a setup, not a spoiler, trust. And I just like mind blown if you're fangirling like I am. And she makes some choices. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse. And welcome to, I would say like long awaited for me. I don't know if it's long awaited for you, but finally my Jennifer Hillier spotlight video. So I know I've been talking about doing this for a long time and I'm finally ready. I wanted to do a reread of some of her books, which I did. And now I feel like I can officially declare a favorite and also lend hopefully some insight to each one of the books, maybe help you guys decide where to begin if you haven't read anything by her yet or what to pick up next if you are trying to decide what to pick up next. So I am gonna talk about her books in publication order versus the order that I read them in, but just for a little bit more background and context <laughs> for those who are new to the party. The first Jennifer Hillier book I read was Jar of Hearts. So this came out in 2018. And in 2018, I went to my first Thriller Fest, which is an annual conference hosted by international thriller writers. So I feel like it's funny for me to say this now, but at the time I attended a panel of thriller writers of some at the time unknown to me thriller writers, which included Riley Sager and Jennifer Hillier. And she was talking about this book and I was instantly intrigued, bought it, and loved it and became Loki obsessed with her as an author. So I have since read everything she's written and actually part of me filming this video was to go back and actually reread two of her books. So I reread Jar of Hearts and I reread Little Secrets. And now, like I said, I feel like I can really talk intelligently about all of her books. But we are gonna start at the beginning of her career and let's just dive right in because there's a lot to talk about. So first up, I would consider these books a duology even though I feel like Jennifer Hillier herself, and when I say feel like, I mean I have listened to interviews with her, <laughs> read interviews with her, where she says you can read these books independent of one another, so all of her books take place in the same universe, in that she will pull characters from one book to the next, sometimes in an Easter egg kind of a way, sometimes the story continues for a certain character, but I read her books out of order, so it's not it's not a series, it's more of she'll pull a coffee shop from one book and include it in two other ones because they're all set in and around Seattle. And she will reference back maybe an incident that happened in one of the books. So it's kind of the sense of it's Easter egg. So if you know, you know, but if you don't know, you're not necessarily missing anything. So just sort of more of a fun thing, I feel like if you're fangirling like I am. And the exception. I feel like is these books because I feel like if you read Freak, which is her second book, it's not gonna have the same impact if you haven't read Creep. So let's start with where it all started. So Creep came out in 2011 and in this one we are following a professor, Sheila Tao, and she's an expert in human behavior. And when the book opens, she has been engaging in an affair with her grad student, Ethan. And she also has been dating a very nice man who she is now engaged to. So she is breaking off her affair with Ethan. But Ethan doesn't really want to let her go. So the tagline on this one is, if he can't have her, no one can. So Sheila is having a very hard time untangling herself from Ethan because he is not accepting the breakup at all. And this one gets very dark. We have some murders that are happening on campus. So we have a bit of a serial killer vibe that is going on. We have Sheila trying to shield her fiance from this relationship that she was in. And what's very interesting in the many interviews I have seen with Jennifer Hillier, I have been to Thriller Fest a few times, so I've seen multiple in-person interviews with her as well. And she talked about when she wrote this book that she was doing a critique group and Sheila Tao is a sex addict and someone who was reading the book told her out of the gate, like no one's gonna wanna read this. Like no one's gonna wanna read this unlikable character. And she wound up dialing back a lot of the book and it didn't sell. And she wound up sort of returning to the original book 
wound up getting a deal with it and sort of a lesson from a writer's standpoint of trusting your own gut and while you can take in other critiques also sort of being true to your own story so what i found very interesting having read jar of hearts which was her fifth book and then going back and reading earlier works is you can see all not like the breadcrumbs of what happens in Jar of Hearts, but the breadcrumbs of who Jennifer Hillier is as a writer. And out of the gate, she was not holding anything back, was not afraid to get really dark and messy, has very complex characters, has people making not always the best decisions and having to live with the consequences of it. So we get, as I say, Sheila's relationship with Ethan. There is also some police investigation in this because we have the murders happening on campus. And I was just obsessed and kind of stunned and just had a great time with this book and loved seeing sort of the early signs of Jennifer Hillier. So talking about this as a duology, so Freak actually carries on the story of some of the characters from Creep. And then we also get introduced to some new characters. So we have some more serial killer vibes. We have some new crimes that are taking place. And I just, I have a very hard time talking about this book because it does give away things that happen in here. So my advice would be read these in order. I read them back to back because I was so like, oh, when this ended, I was like, must read more, <laughs> which I absolutely loved. And I thought they were great, but you can see, as I say, sort of later Jennifer Hillier. And I know a lot of times with authors, there might be a change in their writing, or you might just see sort of a differentiation, or maybe they branch off into different directions. But I feel like Jennifer Hillier has been here since the very beginning. And you know what I mean when I say that, I hope. And I loved them. So if you're into serial killer vibes, a bit of police detecting, these are great places to start. The next book is The Butcher, and this came out in 2014. And I absolutely loved the premise of this book, but I'm obviously gonna be honest with you guys as well. The full execution of this book didn't work for me. So this is my least favorite of all of her books, and not without good parts of it, but I felt like I took a little bit of issue with some character choices. So the premise of this book is 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there was a notorious serial killer known as the Beacon Hill Butcher. And our main character, Edward Shank, was a hero. So he was the police chief and he hunted down and killed the Beacon Hill Butcher years ago and just famous out the wazoo and put an end to this terrible era of what was happening. And he is now 80 years old. He is clearly retired and he is going to move out of his Victorian home and into an assisted living home and he winds up gifting his house to his grandson Matt. So Matt is a chef, he is on kind of being followed by this reality TV show, he's in a long-term relationship although a little skittish about letting his girlfriend move in with him. But he inherits his house and he's really excited about it and he's starting to do some renovations and he winds up finding this trunk that's locked that's kind of literally hiding some family secrets. And he is trying to decide what he should do with this information that he has found. And meanwhile, his girlfriend, Sam, who is trying to, you know, deal with the fact that she's been in this long-term relationship, but her boyfriend doesn't want to move in with her, you know, choices. She also has been fixated on the fact that despite the fact that her mother was killed two years after the Beacon Hill Butcher was killed, she's convinced the Beacon Hill Butcher killed her mother and that the wrong person was accused of the crimes all those years ago and it's something she's low-key been obsessed with so we are getting a lot of past and present mystery although it's all told in present timeline we have sort of this amateur detective investigation going on with sam trying to look into what happened to her mom and then we have edward and matt dealing with family secrets and i liked so much of the core of this story and in listening to an interview with Jennifer Hillier, she talked about how this was part of, now I don't wanna say if it was like the first book she wrote, but she wrote this before Creep as kind of more of like a horror monster story. And then when she was looking for an idea for her third book, she wound up kind of taking pieces of that and then changing it into this. And while I feel like the serial killer part is great, I feel like the dark messed upness of it is great. There were definitely some very shocking moments in this. <laughs> I loved it. I did not totally 
by, like I say, some of the decisions that were made by some of the characters. And I also felt like there was kind of a little bit of like an extraneous, not really subplot, but it, like it's hard to talk about it without giving stuff away. But there was one decision in particular that a character made that I did not feel was in line with that character and in line with what had happened throughout the story. And I felt more like the decision was made by the character in order to allow for something else to happen in the plot, but I didn't buy that they would have done the thing that they did. So I don't know how to talk about it without being cryptic, because again, I don't want to give it away. And also, to be clear, like this wasn't all bad, but that piece of it just made it, and this is going to sound probably eye rolly too, made it a little bit more unbelievable for me. But I enjoyed the core of her writing. I enjoyed, like I say, the places that went very dark. I was very much here for, and it was very much harkened to Jennifer Hillier's writing. So not my favorite of the bunch, but I think, again, if you enjoy the serial killer vibes, and then in this one we get past present mysteries, this one might be a little bit more up your alley. And they're all, I feel like I should also say, they all can get a bit gory up to this point. So there's definitely some very violent scenes in all of these books. And it's just like, it's cringeworthy, but it serves the story. So the violence isn't what bothered me because I feel like the violence very much served the story and the characters, but it was just sort of that one, that one decision that was made really changed a lot of my feeling on the rest of the story and sort of that character in general fake. The next book I have is Wonderland and this came out in 2015. I'm going to apologize because I know this is like a shiny cover that's going to get weird with the light. So I read this last year. I read this after Jar of Hearts and this was like the first of her books I read after Jar of Hearts. So I know like back at the beginning I was like I was so obsessed with her stuff but it took me entirely too long to pick up more of her stuff and I loved this book. So I won't tell you who, but this book contains two characters who have roles in other books. But because I read this after Jar of Hearts, I wasn't aware of it until I read other books of hers. So again, you can read them in any order you want to, and it won't make a difference in that way. But I loved when I was reading other books of hers, and I was like, I know that person. They were in X book. So I very much enjoyed that sort of in hindsight. But this one, as you can tell by the cover, takes place at an amusement park. <laughs> it is so creepy. So every time I talk about this book, I just have to read what's on the back because I feel like I can't do it justice. And I feel like the description on the back of the book, again, really just tells the story of who Jennifer Hillier is. So there is an amusement park called Wonderland. And in this book, we have a woman named Vanessa Castro. So she is the deputy police chief of Seaside, Washington, where the town takes place. So it is her first day on the job. She has just moved here with her daughter after getting divorced. She's looking to kind of start over. She does have a past history with this town, so she's a bit familiar with the town. She's familiar with the amusement park, which has been there forever. And this amusement park, like the entire town hinges on it. It brings in the tourists, all of their money comes from it. It's sort of like Cape Cod in the high season type of a thing. So this amusement park is the core of this town and everybody relies on it for jobs, for income, the whole nine. So this amusement park can do nothing wrong. So you know, out of the gate and out of the gate, <laughs> something goes wrong with this amusement park. So it's talking about how this amusement park is an institution in this town. And it says, maybe it's the Clown Museum, home to creepy wax replicas of movie stars and a massive collection of antique porcelain dolls. Or maybe it's the terrifyingly real house of horrors. Or maybe it's the dead decaying body left in the midway for all the wonder workers to see. So when this book opens, a teenage employee is found dead by the Ferris wheel and like investigation ensues. But Vanessa is sort of up against a whole bunch of people who want to protect the park and protect any sort of bad press because no tourist wants to come to an amusement park where they're finding dead bodies. But Vanessa is no nonsense and she's not there to bend to anybody's will or to get into any kind of politics or any kind of nonsense. She is there to do her job. And this book was so much fun. Like I was obsessed when I was reading it. 
this to me was very much yes here we are again jennifer hillier at her finest you again get complicated characters you get people making bad choices and living with consequences you get people doing unlikable things and i loved every bit of it i was hooked I was in for the investigation part of it. So again, she is a cop, so you're getting police investigation. You're also getting a lot of messy relationships. You're getting a lot of the mother-daughter relationship. Vanessa's daughter winds up getting a job at Wonder World, which you, or Wonderland, excuse me, which you can imagine makes Vanessa a little bit nervous. And the first dead body isn't the only weird thing going on in this town. So if you love amusement parks, if you love super creep factor, like the the porcelain dolls and the wax room and all of those things it's so ugh, creepy and she paints such a great picture of what all of those places feel like you can feel the haunted houseness of it all and i just loved the relationships i absolutely love vanessa as a character i thought she was amazing and her relationships with other people her dynamic with other people her dynamic with other people on the police force, but I thought she was just absolutely great and I loved this one. And next up we have Jar of Hearts, which came out in 2018. So this is the one, you guys, this is the one that changed the trajectory of my life, I swear. <laughs> so again, in listening to a lot of interviews with her, she talked very openly and there's a, I want to say it was the Sisters in Crime podcast, if that's correct. Well, I will link that one and I'm pretty sure that's the one where I heard her talking about this in particular. And I had the great pleasure of meeting her at Thriller Fest. So not the first year because I didn't know, but the next year I brought my book with me and I went back and I got to meet her and have a quick chat about this book. And she talked about how sort of after she wrote Wonderland, she was kind of at a bit of a crossroads and wasn't sure if kind of that was it for her. Did she have another book in her? Was this going to be her career or was it sort of, this was a good ride, I wrote four books, good for me, and maybe it's time to try something else. So I feel like this is a story you hear so many times from so many creative people where they're gonna give one, like one last shot. Like it was like Chrissy Metz had like $10 in her bank account and then she got This Is Us. You know, Riley Sager was laid off from his job and he wound up spending three months and he wrote Final Girls and Stephen King tweeted about it and we all know what happened to Riley Sager. Like these people who have these amazing stories and Jennifer Hillier very similarly went into this and she was like, I'm just gonna put everything I have into this. I'm not gonna hold anything back. I'm gonna write the book I wanna write. I'm gonna write the book I wanna read and let it be as dark and as messy and as twisted as I want it to be. And I feel like the payoff of this was just off the charts for me. This was a book where I was uncomfortable, I was freaked out, I was cringing. Like if it was a movie, I would have been reading it through my eyes and I could not put it down. I was so invested, I, I just couldn't get enough of it. And when I finished it, the feeling I had of what just happened, I wanna reread this book immediately. <laughs> it was like the two feelings I had as a reader and then as a writer. It felt like such a bold, fearless choice that she made over and over and over again with everything that happened in this book. And I just like mind blown. So when I reread it this year, I did the audiobook of it, which is also tremendous, just a little bit of a sidebar. And like, don't worry, so there's a few red tabs, which I added into it when I was listening to the audiobook because somehow in my massive dog earring, I managed to miss them the first time around. Who am I, right? Who am I? So this book follows three best friends from high school. So it's Angela, Kaiser, and Gio. And I had sort of read this blurb on it and it was like, one of them is killed, one of them goes to jail, and one of them won't stop looking for the truth. So when the three of them were juniors in high school, Angela went to a party one night and then she went missing. She was never found again, she was never heard from again, and the case went completely cold. So when this book opens, it's 14 years later, and Angela's body has been found in the woods behind Gio's childhood home, believed to be a victim of the known and captured serial killer, Calvin James, who, as fate would have it, was Gio's boyfriend in high school. So when the book opens, Kaiser, who is now a police detective, is arresting Gio for her connection with the murder and for what she knew and did not tell anybody 14 years ago. 
So this book is about the consequences of that choice. This book is about the relationship of these three people. And we get the past and present timeline of what happened to Angela in the past, what's happening in the present, and Gio, who winds up doing a little bit of time for her knowledge of what happened to Angela back in the day, is released from prison. And sure enough, more murders start to happen that are very reminiscent of Calvin, even though Calvin himself has been in jail. So what's going on? So we get the haunting from the past. We get to witness this relationship between the friends when they were younger and then with Kaiser and Gio as they're older. Gio's dad, for some reason, still lives in the house she grew up in as a child in the house where the woods behind it is where they found Angela. But this book goes to some very, very dark places. I will not sugarcoat at all. This to me is her darkest and most messed up of them all. So maybe that's why I love it, I don't know. But I know that this is not for everybody. So if you are in it to win it and you wanna see what Jennifer Hillier is all about, I feel like this is a great place to start. It is definitely a great representation of who she is as an author, but the exploration and the darkness is definitely, like I said, there were some scenes that made me extremely uncomfortable on this book. I found some things very shocking. I have like different tolerances for different things in books and not that I couldn't take it, but more of, I was like, wow, like she's, she's going there with some of this stuff. So like shocking in that way. And I just, I loved it. And I feel like I said, you know, you can tell that she went all in and did not pull any punches or hold back in this one. And I think it was just the payoff is like crazy big. Next up, we have her 2020 release, Little Secrets. I feel like this is a little bit more on people's radar. And this to me, well, I feel like everything is psychological suspense. I feel like this has a little bit of psychological domestic suspense with it because this is very much focused on a married couple, but there is also such incredible darkness to this book, which I feel like should almost go without saying. So in this book, we're following Marin and Derek. They are college sweethearts. They are both now in their early 40s. They are both super successful entrepreneurs. And when the book opens, we are at the Pike Place Market at Christmas and Marin is with her young son, Sebastian. And Derek is like at a food truck somewhere at Pike Place. And she is kind of in the bustling crowd. She's on her cell phone. She's talking to her kid. They're in and out of stores. And Derek winds up calling her and she lets go of Sebastian's hand for 30 seconds and he's gone and he vanishes and they can't find him anywhere. So we fast forward 15 months in chapter two. So that's a setup, not a spoiler, trust. And Marin is still trying to deal with the consequences of what happened because the FBI have sort of ruled the case cold and closed and there's never been a lead, there's never been anything, and all Marion can do, understandably, is blame herself for what happened because she was with him and she's the one who let go of his hand. And Marin is trying to figure out how to move forward. So her relationship with Derek has become very challenging over the past 15 months, and it's very fractured. When Sebastian went missing, he was very much like, how could you do this? She's taking all the blame for this. And she winds up hiring a private detective because she doesn't care that the FBI thinks this case is over. She doesn't think it's over. And her private detective winds up giving her a call and they're like, well, we were trying to follow some leads on your son. We actually found out your husband's having an affair. So Marin takes all of her rage and all of her anger and puts it into the mistress. Because from Marin's perspective, she has already lost her son. She'll be damned if she's gonna lose her husband as well. And she makes some choices with this information that she gets from her private detective, who, of course, her husband doesn't know she hired. And like I say, all her energy goes into her looking into this woman. So we wind up getting multiple POVs in this. And I was actually talking about this on my channel because I just reread this one last month and I did the audiobook the second time around, which was actually pretty good. And I shouldn't say it's actually pretty good. That sounded snarky. It was good. I physically read it the first time I did the audiobook the second time. And someone had said to me how they started to read this and were gonna quit on it because it was like, oh, it's a kidnapping story, but wound up staying with it. And they were like, I'm so glad I did because this book went into like a completely different like direction. 
words and that's true it's not a kidnapping story like that happens in the first couple pages and then we fast forward so obviously Sebastian's kidnapping is an overarching theme and it is something that completely impacts Marin on a day-to-day -day basis but this is really like a revenge story and again the darkness that comes out when you're in so much pain so it is grief and it is anger and it is rage and again with the theme of jennifer hillier it is people making decisions people living with consequences of their choices people not always doing what you might agree with or doing what you think is right and it is people just trying to survive in their circumstance and i thought this was extremely interesting i really enjoyed this book the first time around and i feel like i have so much more appreciation for it the second time around Marin is probably one of my favorite characters in all of the books that she has written and I just thought this was so well done. And again, all of it being in the same universe, you get little nuggets from other books, which I didn't pick up on the first time because I hadn't read her earlier books. So I actually misspoke. I said I read Wonderland second. I read Jar of Hearts, then I read Little Secrets, then I read Wonderland. I can't even keep my own self straight. So a little bit more domestic in the sense that you're getting the relationship and the marriage, but still all the dark overtones of a good Jennifer Hillier book. And finally, her most recent book, Things We Do in the Dark, which just came out a couple months ago. And this one is dark, messed up people doing dark and messed up things. All of her books are. So in this one, on the opening pages, we meet a woman named Paris Peralta. She is standing in her bathroom, holding a straight razor and covered in blood, and her husband is laying dead in the bathtub. And Marin gets arrested. The police are there. And while she's got some concerns about the fact that she's maybe going to get charged with murder, she's more concerned with the fact that the publicity that is going to surround her arrest, because she is married to a much older man who was a retired comedian who has since come out of retirement and is all the famous things. And she knows her face is going to be plastered everywhere. And she's afraid that her past is going to come back to haunt her and that scares her more than being charged with his murder so we get multiple timelines in this one as well we get multiple points of view that was all i knew about it when i went into this book and i'm so glad i went into it on the blind side because there were turns and things that were happening in here that i wasn't aware were part of the story and i was like oh good we're doing that oh ooh, interesting we're doing that and i really enjoyed that part of it so we do get a podcast element to this but i feel like not in the way you might more traditionally be used to having a podcast in a book these days but very well done and serving the story in all the best ways and to me part of this book is we are following someone who was putting together the breadcrumbs and putting the puzzle together and figuring things out so i feel like as the reader we're a little bit aware of things that one of the characters in this book is not aware of. So we are following them with our knowledge as they are putting pieces together, which I very much enjoyed. And then I was listening to, shocker, an interview with Jennifer Hillier talking about the book. And Jimmy is her husband who is dead on page one. And Jennifer Hillier is like, I feel like my favorite character in this book is Jimmy. And she was like, even though he's like dead the entire time, but we get to see Jimmy's impact on the women in his life. So it's his wife, it's his best friend, it's his personal assistant. And we get to see him through their eyes and through the lens of their experiences with him. So again, did not shy away from dark things, did not shy away from really, really messy things. This is the first Jennifer Hillier book I have read where there actually is a content warning in the beginning. This is the arc, so it's actually not in here. It's in the finished copy of the book. There is a content warning. So I know that there are some triggers for some people, and I feel like in general, a lot of her books are really, like I say, not for everybody, but if you like the dark thriller, I feel like she's definitely someone who should be on your list. So I really enjoyed this one, and I loved like the connections to the other books. This is her first book that actually takes place in seattle and in toronto and she lives in slash grew up in toronto lived in seattle so you're really getting her universe and in the interview i was listening to she was also talking about how this is the first time she really leaned into her heritage as a filipino canadian and talks a lot about her growing up and leans into her experiences in a way 
that she hadn't in other books, which I also thought was really interesting. But again, there's a lot of uncomfortableness in the situations in this book. It is not something that shies away from things. And I just, I really, really enjoyed it. And I thought, again, I kind of had an expectation going into this and the book went into a different direction. And I love that. I love when I'm wrong about what I think a book is going to be. So moment of truth, I feel like this will shock absolutely nobody after having read and reread. Jar of Hearts is still my favorite of all of her books. I just think it does everything at its finest. I feel like this perfectly encapsulates who she is as a writer and this story the second time around, I still got chills. I still had all those feelings of mind blown writer hat on, mind blown reader hat on and just loved everything that she did. And then I feel like second, I'm not gonna be able to force rank them all, but I feel like tied for second is Wonderland and Little Secrets. So I feel like if you are new to Jennifer Hillier, Little Secrets is a good way in because I feel like it's the least violent, though disturbing in a lot of ways, choices are made. And I also feel like Wonderland is a good way in if you are sort of a fan, like that creepy amusement park vibe of it all. And I just, I just love both of these. And there are characters in both of these books, like Vanessa and Marin, that I absolutely just love both of these ladies. I just think they're absolutely great. So you guys, I feel like it goes without saying because you've been here. <laughs> if you are not reading Jennifer Hillier, you should read Jennifer Hillier. I just think she's such an incredible talent. And I am so glad she's getting so much notoriety now, so much press. Her Things We Do in the Dark was a book of the month pick. I feel like there's a lot more swelling around her lately. Little Secrets wound up really kind of taking off again, kind of over the course of the past year or so when it came out in paper book, like it kind of got like a second coming. I imagine for every writer who released a book during the panorama, it was a really difficult time. And to see that success coming to her and to see all this praise coming to her, I think is really just amazing. But I also feel like her early books, like it's been there the entire time. I feel like her books were well-crafted out of the gate. Again, the sort of signature Jennifer Hillier elements of the darkness, of the messed up -edness, it's all there for the taking. And I just think they're absolutely great. So if you're into serial killers, this is a great duology for you to read. And I definitely think when you finish Creep, you're gonna just wanna pick up Freak. So make sure you have a little extra time on your hands. Jar of Hearts you could read in a weekend, if not a day. It's 300 pages and it's compulsive as all get out. And then we already talked about these two, which are amazing. And then we have Things You Do in the Dark, which just came out, which is amazing. And I'm recapping everything. And then The Butcher, which again, when I say it's my least favorite of the group, it doesn't mean it's a bad book. It's just, I can't get past that one choice, that one decision. So if anybody has read The Butcher and wants to talk about it, Feel free to not, don't talk about it down below. We don't wanna <laughs> spoil it for anybody, but shoot me an email or DM me on Instagram or something. I'm happy to talk about my specific feelings about this one, but I very much enjoyed the core story of it all. And again, you've got serial killer vibes in that and past and present timelines and like all the things or past and present mysteries, mystery in the past, mystery in the present, things that I love, love, love. So let me know, have you read them all? What are you gonna read next? Did this inspire you to pick up anything in particular? And if you have any like further questions about Jennifer Hillier, I talk about it like I'm like an expert on her. I'm just an obsessive fangirl about her, but let me know. I'm happy to answer more questions about the books or to help sort of guide you towards something in particular if there's one that you're interested in and we can do all that down below. But thank you guys. I know this was a super long video because of course there's a lot to talk about. She has a lot of books out, so more power to her. But thanks for being here. Thanks for coming back. If you are a returning viewer, thanks for coming for the first time if you're new here and I will see you guys in another video really soon. Bye everybody.